All right, g'day there. I'm Richard Musgrave Evans, and today I'm in Outback, Northern New South Wales, in the uh, breakaway country, actually, sorry, the jump up country, just before the border of Queensland, so we're right in the central Australia sort of region. All right, now, as you can see, we've got intense light. It's midday, we've got a lot of light and shadow. I'm just hoping you're gonna be able to see what I'm actually painting, because of the intensity of the light here, so bright it's casting a big shadow there anyway so bear with me and spare that in mind okay now as you can see I've blocked in just a few things just to get a composition I'm painting on clear prime Belgian linen as usual got a nice Liquitex uh, palette knife huge great and oil paint all right so what I'm going to do is go for the biggest differences now the Thing I reckon I'll just put this guy in. Actually, hang on, let's have a look. I'll put a couple of darks in. So I'll go for some alizarin crimson and viridian green just to create a nice dark. Maybe a tad of burnt sienna with that one. I just want to put a few darks. Most of them are going to be eaten up in a minute when I go back over them, but what's happening is I've got the light directly behind me. So there's almost no shadows in the landscape, so it's full sun, high noon. And that's typically what the Impressionists did, the early Impressionists. You get the light behind you, it lights the whole landscape up, and then you haven't got a lot of shadow. But you've got a lot of intensity of light. Okay. And any shadow that is there is quite dark, so... I'm just going to... pick a few uh, marks in just to create the uh, contrast between the intense light that's going to be happening. Just working out a few spots, don't want to get too carried away with that. Like so, right. That'll be enough dark. The rest is going to be light. Okay, so we've got that, let's do the sky. Right, what do we got? Okay. Yep, yeah, right. Just a bit of burnt sienna, some white. Blue, cobalt blue, burnt sienna, bit of alizarin crimson. I'm trying to knock it back, knock the intensity of the sky back down on the horizon, and then as I go higher, I'll bring up uh, a little bit more brightness. Let's just, let's just have a look what I've got so far. Yeah, I think it needs a little bit more of a. It's a kind of a grey down right on the horizon. That's what you've got to realise. Even though the sky is blue all the way down to the horizon, particularly in Australia, it's all blue as you can see. It's still not the intense blue as what as everything that's going on up higher. So you've just got to knock it back a bit down lower to give the feeling of distance. And if you do that, the painting will get much more of a feeling of distance and light. Bit more yellow, a bit more burnt sienna. So I've got yellow ochre, like I said, and burnt sienna. White. Just bring a little bit more, a bit more colour into that. So what do we got here? Now it seems, it seems quite dark, what I'm doing, grey, but I'm doing it on purpose. It's kind of like a, almost like a yellow grey. And then next, we'll go up a notch. With more intense blue and white. Darker tone, basically. Darker tone. Flies, that's what we got. We got flies. Just get that in. I'm always constantly aware that the camera's there, so I. Every now and then I feel like going like that, I've got to remember to stay out of the way of the camera. 
which adds another dimension to the complexity. That's all right, it's all part of it. All part of it. Okay, so a bit more blue, a little bit darker. No, a bit darker than that. Make it up as we go, make it up as we go. got a little bit of yellow dominance in the blue. This one's going to have a bit of red dominance in the blue, so I didn't want to mix them together because if you mix yellow and blue together, you get a grey. I'm trying to keep them separate for now. around the edges and I'll peel that off. If you've watched any of these shows before you know how that all works. Okay, now where's that bit today? I've got the bit around this side. It's fairly windy today and I found if you have you been too close to the camera on a windy day you actually won't hear anything I'm saying, you'll only hear the have been flogging, so it's over there, out of the wind. Blend, blend, blend. Just got to work out this composition. Hang on. Got to work out where I'm putting my lines. I think I'm going this way today. Across there. going up this way today. Always using what's there, but also composing the picture as I go. As I've said before, there's no point copying exactly what I'm seeing now because if I move 100 metres that way, the whole composition is going to be completely different anyway. So what I'm trying to capture is the feeling of the area and uh, Quite often a photograph won't capture that, and that's what I'm all about. Painting on location, capturing the light and atmosphere. Right, blending. What I'm doing is wiping each time. Often when I'm blending, I wipe the knife clean, as you've already seen. Wipe it like that, so you can get a nice. You can see it all blending beautifully now. Whoops! Except for that one. See, that's why you have to wipe the knife clean, because if you don't, you get those nasty, nasty pasties like that one. Yeah. But if you wipe it clean. Okay, now I stood back, I want to do a little bit more 
winter, currently winter at the moment, as you can see in winter it's still pretty intense. You get really cold nights, can get below zero, no worries, but at least the days can be really nice and sunny like this. Summer, 50 degrees, easy. All too often. That's why I'm here in winter painting. Okay.
trees on the hills. So what we'll do is put them in. Okay, so yeah, they're quite deep down because as usual they're uh, in an arid country and a long way away, so they're not exactly the greenest of green trees in the world. They're more of a not struggling along and just making it type of green. And they're also in the distance, so they've re received it off a bit anyway. that does gives the illusion of form by the trees quite often give you the feeling of where the direction of the hill is running trees. Those trees are really going to describe this landscape because like I said before there's no shadow. Not much shadow. So the trees are actually going to describe the forms rather than the shadows. This salt bush. Now I'm really lightly touching here because I only just want the salt bushes to grab. here and a few salt bushes there. Okay, what do we got? Let's have a look. Yep. It's gonna mix up a yellow and an or uh, yellow oak or an orange. Much more white with it. I want a very light, bright colour, but I still want it to be a tad richer than some of the other stuff. Just as it comes into the foreground here, just want it to be a little bit richer. To suggest foreground richness, basically. Take a bit of, oh, kind of I, I think it's clean enough. Let's take a little bit of paint off here. Spin run. Wipe the palette knife clean. Okay, what do we got? Let's have a bit of that. A bit of that. Intense orange every now and then and white. There's a couple of stings in the landscape. Like the thing about this area, you've got white rock, you've got purple rock, it's all very light in tone, you've got orange rock. Just generalised with a bleaching high intensity sunlight. And so the general feeling of the landscape is this colour, but also there's mixtures of subtle other colours, oranges and like I said, purples and whatever. So I've got a bit of
them. dark like so where the intensity of the light is just absolutely pinging okay so I've had a bit of fun hang on I'll just put this uh, big run thing again I'm gonna get that tape off because I just want to see what I've actually got it's quite windy so I've got to be careful with this. I've had a few disasters recently. As you can see, you could have a disaster pulling this off in the wind with wet oil paint. Kind of a good effect. It creates a nice border. It creates a nice border. Hang on, here we go. At the same time, you can open it up where you feel like. It's a good thing. I've got that off. I'll reassess what I've actually got. Might just get rid of that green for a start. I didn't have green on the top. I thought I was after some subtle blues and stuff. Okay. That's the thing about using a palette knife. You can get super clean colours just by wiping things clean. With a brush, with oils, it tends to get messy. So for on-site painting, the old palette knife. Once you get used to it, it's fantastic. I can see subtle tones that a better camera wouldn't capture. In midday light, the camera would just bleach it all out. Instead of getting subtlety, you just have basically a bleached out mess. But when you're standing here before nature, you can see a lot of subtleties going on. So you put them in. Now a little bit of yellow ochre with that. Yellow ochre and white and orange, that real high key Australian colour. Just want to typify, hang on, what are we doing? Just want to bring a clean edge up here somewhere.
we're seriously getting there, which is great, because that's the whole object. Alright, so that'll do. Basically, what I was trying to achieve today, as you can see, I was talking earlier where it's light and shadow is intense here, so I'm hoping you can actually see what I'm painting, because I know it's in deep shadow. I'm standing in a very white, high intensity area. Now, what I'll do is get the camera off and let you have a look. I think I've captured what I wanted. I've captured the Australian sunlight in the high noon. I like to paint morning and evening, as you know. Sometimes it's just fun to capture that real bleached out Australiana. Alright, I'll get the camera off and we'll have a look. No worries, thank you. Bin run first. And under this deep dark shadow we've got a painting. Let's come in and have a look. A bit hard to see at the moment, hopefully something will happen in a minute. Alright, so as you can see, what I've tried to capture is intense bright light. With really high key colours. Ochres and whites. Everything very light and bright. There's a deep blue sky up ahead, fading down into the distance. Now if we come in and have a closer look, you'll see there's a lot of the raw linen showing, the clear primed raw linen. You can see I've lightly dragged to give the feeling of rocks, etc. Dragged through, leaving a lot of bits and pieces showing to give the feeling of rocky country. All right, so there you go, high noon, jump up. All right, well, there you go. Well, now if you liked the video, remember to like the video. Forward it on to your friends and subscribe. Until next time, we'll see you down the road.